Copyright, The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the copyright infringers. Their 50-year mission? To create strange new semi-original films, to seek out new characters and plot lines, to boldly go where no Paramount or CBS has gone before. about the fast and furiousification of the upcoming Star Trek Beyond and can't wait until 2017 for Brian Fuller to hopefully write the ship with the new Star Trek TV series, fear not. There is a shocking amount of underground fan Star Trek productions happening right now, and most of them are totally great. None of them are official, making them, yes, fan films, but don't let that sour your experience. These Star Trek fan films are looking good. CBS and Paramount own the rights to Star Trek, and until very recently, they've been very cool about letting their fans make their own Star Treks, as long as they don't profit from it. Prelude to Axanar is a 21-minute Star Trek fan film, released in 2014 that raised over $100,000 on Kickstarter. The film tells the story of the Four Years' War, a conflict between the Klingon Empire and the Federation that took place roughly 15 years before the original series started. Prelude is made to look like a documentary, cutting between different retired high-ranking military officials from both sides of the war, as well as awesome-looking CG space battles. It is a totally great short film that I recommend that you watch. It features cast members from official Star Trek series, including Tony Todd, Kate Vernon, J.G. Hertzler, and Gary Graham, though in different roles. They are currently working on a feature-length sequel simply titled Axanar, for which they've raised over a million dollars on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Which is totally exciting! Except for the fact that it's very possible it won't happen. Back in December, CBS slash Paramount sued them for copyright infringement. Even if Axanar doesn't end up happening, don't worry, you still have options. As Charlie G and Andrews wrote for io9, we're living in the golden age of Star Trek web series right now. So, if you're not jazzed for Star Trek Beyond's Enterprise Destroying Madness, you're covered. There are so many Star Trek vent films. Some great, some not great, but I'll do my best to cover them all. Before we get to today's underground Star Trek scene, let's go back to where it all started. Star Trek the original series was first aired in September 1966, and within a year, the first Star Trek fan film would be created. In 1967, John Callahan and Rusty Rizzardi and their friends set up some chairs, covered tables with tablecloths, pinned Starfleet patches to their shirts, and rolled the camera in this silent film that is probably the first Star Trek fan film ever. I found this and many other early Star Trek fan films on a blog called Star Trek Reviewed, which I've linked to in the description. Side note, Star Trek fans pioneered the fan fiction genre as a whole, creating the world's first fanzines, which explored alternate plot lines from the show. If you want to learn more about that, I've already made a video about it, which you can watch here. In 1969, Junior Star Trek would debut, an eight-minute piece created by 10-year-old Peter Stoney Umschwiller on his dad's 16mm camera, which actually looks totally great, especially for a 10-year-old in the 60s. The show was complete with faux commercial breaks and even made it onto PBS. By the 70s, Star Trek fan films started to take off. In 1971, Ray Glasner created a five-minute Star Trek creation for a TV production class at Ohio State University, which features Kirk and Spock going back in time to 20th century Earth to learn all about television cameras. Well, Mr. Spock, what do you make of this? Well, apparently a rather crude device once used to transmit pictures by scanning light. As I said, crude, but rather effective. Yes, Mr. Spock, I think they were called television cameras. Very exciting stuff. A higher production value would come in 1973 with Turkish Star Trek, which mixed actual Star Trek footage with new sets, cast, and some location shooting. The film is eighth in a series titled Omar the Tourist, and it's the only one to parody Star Trek. It's about a homeless Turkish man who accidentally beams aboard the Enterprise. Comedy ensues.
The 70s saw several Star Trek parodies, animations, and even more teens fulfilling their dreams of being Captain Kirk, with titles like Paragon's Paragon, The Klingon Incident, The Two Ronnies, Dick's Voyages, and The Trouble with Walnuts, to name a few. This type of production plugged along for quite a while, so let's fast forward to the odds. As some fans began to turn on the series with arguably disappointing entries like Voyager and Enterprise, fans really kicked their films into gear. And with the cancellation of Enterprise in 2005, there was no Star Trek content for four years. And in that time, professional cameras, editing and VFX software got much cheaper, and online video distribution and funding got much easier. When an audience isn't being served, that audience will often serve itself. This resulted in a surge of high quality Star Trek fan films. The writing and acting is still a bit of a problem with many of them, as is the case with many low budget films, but they're starting to look great. You might think that the Abrams films would have quelled the need for more Star Trek fan films, but it kind of had the opposite effect. Most of the diehard fans that were watching and making these fan films hated the action packed canon breaking approach he took, so more and more fan films were made. Many of the fans didn't even love Enterprise, resulting in many groundbreaking, classic feeling Star Trek fan films during its run. Combined with the fact that the audience that was nostalgic for the original series was much older, and consequently able to take a more focused approach to their work than say the predominantly children created fan films of the late 60s, early 70s. The first of these, Starship Exeter, premiered in 2002, and it really sets the bar for the future of fan track. There are only two episodes released, both of which are totally pretty good, and serve as a spin-off within the original series. Though 2004 would really break the seal on fan-made Star Trek, with Star Trek New Voyages. The series, which has run nine seasons, is meant to be a continuation of the original series, which was cut short. It has since been retitled Star Trek Phase 2, in reference to Gene Roddenberry's cancelled plan for a second Star Trek series. The series features several original cast members, including George Takei as Sulu, and Walter Koenig as Chekhov, and Gene Roddenberry's son is a consulting producer. It honestly feels so much like the original series, right down to the effects, sets, and costumes. It's honestly totally great, and if you feel robbed by the cancellation of the original series, this will ease your pain greatly. These shows were both pre-YouTube, and if you're old enough to remember, watching video on the internet before YouTube was no easy task. The fact that anybody was able to find, watch, and form a community around these speaks to the high demand from an audience who wanted something other than a cold war with time-traveling aliens. However, this isn't the first time that original cast members have reprised their roles in fan films. In 1985, George Takei reprised his role of Sulu in the fan film titled Yorktown, A Time to Heal, which is one of the best looking and most ambitious Star Trek fan films to date. Totally on par with the real thing, though it was abandoned two years after production. But work resumed on it in 2011 here in Toronto, Canada. You're welcome, world. Since there have been many Star Trek fan films that serve as continuations or spin-offs of the original series. Starship Farragut, premiered in 2005, is still running and they're working on their fifth and sixth episode. Star Trek Continues aired in 2013 as a continuation of the original series, and they're also working on their sixth episode. Continues also features several Star Trek alumni, including Marina Sirtis, Michael Forrest, Doug Drexler, and more. 2006's Star Trek Hidden Frontier ran for seven seasons and explored gay and lesbian subplots that they weren't able to in the original series. Star Trek Intrepid premiered a year later out of Scotland and features a very convincing Picard lookalike. Of Gods and Men, released in 2007, raised the bar for bringing back original cast and crew. It featured Michelle Nichols, Alan Ruck, Grace Lee Whitney, Garrett Wang, Ethan Phillips, Sirach Lofton, Chase Masterson, J.G. Hertzler, Gary Graham, and Crystal Allen. The film is directed by and stars Tim Russ, reprising his role from Voyager of Tuvok. This massive cast of original Star Trek characters, combined with great sets, effects, costumes, and pretty good writing, makes Of Gods and Men feel much more like original Star Trek than the J.J. Abrams reboot that would happen two years later. Though, not all Star Trek fan films are a trek down memory lane. Star Trek Renegades, which is also directed and starring Tim Russ, is a fairly dark sequel series to Voyager. The pilot premiered here in Toronto at Fan Expo during the summer of 2015 and is totally great. It tells the story of a conspiracy within Starfleet that is supporting a tribe of planet-destroying warriors who Chekhov, reprised by Walter Koenig, and Tuvok must stop by enlisting a ragtag group of criminals, as Starfleet refuses to help. For the most part, the effects look really good. They're not always on par with the Star Trek reboot series, but sometimes they're better, and sometimes they're worse. What the hell is right? Also, it's a much better watch than Into Darkness. 
Just a couple weeks ago, in February 2016, a feature-length Star Trek fan film premiered, titled Horizon. It's not as good as Renegades, as its low budget shows through its writing and acting, but it looks very good, and wouldn't be out of place on sci-fi a couple years ago. The best thing about these fan films is probably also the most interesting thing. The fact that these actors can reprise beloved roles they played decades ago is really cool. But it also comes with the added benefit that for the most part, they're really good actors. Renegades and Of Gods and Men are awesome because they have original cast members who are great at what they do. The fan films that don't feature original cast members can still be totally good, but often, as is the case with many low budget films, they can unfortunately suffer from poor performances and writing. Gene, are you okay? Fine. Really, never better. Jack! Since the original series was so low budget, it didn't really have any good effects or fight scenes, and the dialogue was often hammy and silly and fun, and that's part of what people loved about it. More so than probably any other franchise, Star Trek really lends itself to fan reproduction, as it's fairly easy to achieve the same level of production quality, if not higher, than what was seen on television 50 years ago. Whether it's a great fan film or not, I think it's astonishing that such a dedicated fan base can pull together and say, hey, I don't like Trek and Furious, let's make our own. And it ends up looking like this. I don't know. They're here. Especially when the original looked like this. What do you guys think? Are you excited for Star Trek Beyond? Or is it a total abomination that you're making up for by watching and or making Star Trek fan films? Let me know in the comments, and if you want to go check out my Patreon campaign and support me there, I can do more videos, and I'll love you forever. I'm currently doing a Patreon perk, which is a live stream! I don't know, can you see that? Oh, so exciting. If you haven't already, be sure to click right on my face to subscribe, or at least think about it.